Okay, so we're going to go ahead and model our 3D broadsword here using the app. I'm going to go ahead and delete the plane that comes with it. Quick disclaimer, I am not a very good 3D modeler, but we're going to put in an attempt here. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to start out with a cylinder. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to drop the uh, ring resolution for the vertices around the center uh, down to a more manageable 8 um, vertices. And I'm going to go ahead and hit go here. And this gives us our cylinder, which we're going to use um, to create the base or the handle of our, of our broadsword. So uh, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up rotate here. And I want to do a precision rotation. So I'm just going to go ahead and use those colors as a guide. Uh, red, green, blue is X, Y, Z. So I want to rotate 90 degrees around this, whoops, around the red, which is the X axis. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the gearbox here and I'm going to type 90 degrees and I'm going to rotate by 90 degrees so it's upright so that gives us that. Uh, another thing I notice here is uh, I'd like to have another light. Uh, it's a little dark so I'm going to duplicate the light move that over to the other side so I can get a better look at what I'm doing. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to go ahead and get this thing into a better aspect ratio so it's more uh, narrow like a handle of a, of a sword might be. So I'm going to pull up the scale tool and I'm going to go ahead and just scale it down just a little bit first. Zoom in on it. And then I'm going to go ahead and decide that we want to scale uh, in all dimensions except Y so we can keep it kind of skinny. So what this does is it scales X and Z, but along that green Y axis, it, it doesn't scale it. Um, so that allows us to get the right skinniness for our handle. I'm going to go ahead and stick with maybe that right there and now just to be safe I'm going to reset these. So um, this is our basic shape. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and select it, pop into edit mode so we can actually see the vertices. Um, one of the first things I'd like to do, which I just rotated there by accident, uh, I'd like to grab um, this vertex down here at the bottom and I'd like to pull that one out so we actually kind of have a, a butted end of our um, of our uh, handle. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that and move that down just a little bit. See how that looks. That looks pretty good. Um, I also feel like this should be a little bit more rounded. Right now it's pretty sharp. So I'm just going to move that a little bit more and I'm going to select all and I'm going to go to the face menu and I'm going to smooth. And what that does is kind of capsulizes our, uh, our sword handle a little bit, which actually looks a lot better. Um, now you'll notice the the bottom is, is kind of the way we want it, but the top isn't. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is literally just select a rectangle around the vertices in the top. Notice that I have um, the, the uh, vertex selection type to um, transparent instead of opaque so that I can select all the way through. And by selecting um, the top, I'm going to go ahead and just cut the top right off. Because this open end right here, we're actually not going to see through because it's going to be covered by the top of the handle. So that right there pretty much gives us the, um, the, uh, the, the, the butt of our sword. So I'm going to go ahead and consider this good to go. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and create the disc, which is going to kind of sit on top of the, um, the sword itself. So the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to pop up the top view here so we have an overhead. And I'm going to go drop into sketch mode. And I'm going to pick the circle, and then I'm going to lock the aspect ratio so we can create a perfect circle shape, which is basically going to be a disc. I also don't want this thing to extrude by very much, so I'm going to drop the length down to almost very little, like 0.5. And once I hit done here, we should basically, once I go back to free view, we should have our disc, which looks pretty good. So now that we have our two components, all I really have to do is move them into position. So I'm going to grab the disc. Um, this is actually a good candidate for working in a split view so I can see all the possible angles. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and do a center this as much as I can about the, uh, the sword. I'm going to move over here, just move it a little bit. So the idea here is to get it as, as much into the center above this thing and right on top as I can. And I think that's about as good as we're going to get for a video tutorial. So I got that taken care of. I'm going to pop back out to single view, free view. And we have uh, the base of our sword, which is looking pretty sweet. Um, what I'm going to go ahead and do now is I'm going to um, essentially merge these into one object. Is that something I want to do? 
no, I want to keep this top part flat shaded and I'm going to keep the bottom part smooth shaded like it is. So I'm going to go ahead and just select them together and move them out of the way. So let's go ahead and move that out of the way. And we're going to start working on our actual blade of our sword. Um, this is not going to be too bad because we're actually going to use the sketch tool again. So I'm going to go up to the top view. I'm going to go select the sketch tool and I'm going to switch now to polygon mode. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a diamond shape, which is basically going to be the blade part of our, of our broadsword. So I'm going to hit a point here, point here, point here, and then I'm going to mirror. Uh, that's not as beautiful as I'd like it to be, so I'm going to start over. Yeah, so I do the first three, and then I mirror about the axis of symmetry, which creates our diamond. I want a much longer extrude length, and I want to have quite a few segments here, probably about 10. So I'm going to give it a length 20. We're going to give it... 10 segments along the axis of extrusion. It is indeed a closed shape and I'm going to hit done. And what that has done for us is created essentially what's going to be the, the polygons of our sword edge. Now you notice they're not in the right aspect right now um, with respect to the blade. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and uh, scale this thing um, properly. Uh, the first thing I'd like to do is I'd like to scale it down quite a bit. Uh, maybe about like this, and then I'm going to scale it longwise by quite a bit as well. And what that has done is created essentially uh, the blade of our sword. Um, you'll also notice that it is essentially being smoothed when in reality for this type of shape we would prefer flat shading. I'm going to make that adjustment at the very end because there's a couple things I'd like to do to, um, to finalize the sword, basically giving it a tip. Now this is where things get a little tricky. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is select the top of our sword and then I'm going to center the camera to our selection and then I'm going to zoom way in on that part which is going to be right here. Now we actually only need one vertex to, to, to be at the tip of our sword because it's going to have a very sharp edge. So I'm going to go ahead and do is just select this one and I'm going to duplicate it and I'm going to move it up. Now before I really do that I'd like to do it precisely. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is restrict the movement with all axes except Y, so that when I move it only goes up in Y, and maybe have it about that tall. And then I'm going to go into the overhead view, zoom all the way out, find my vertex, and center the thing just over top of my sword, which is just about right there. Go back to free view. Now I can with confidence know that the thing is sitting just over top of my sword. As good as I'm going to get in a YouTube video at least. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is then create the faces that will essentially tie off the top of my sword. So the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go ahead and go to additive select mode. Yeah, that's what I want. And I'm going to select three faces here and create a polygon out of that. So face, create new. And then I'm going to go ahead and do that again. One, two, it's supposed to be added to select. One, two, three, face, <clears throat> create new. And we're going to do that around the back. So I'm going to swing around to the back. Additive select. One, two, three, face, create new. And then last but not least, Add it to select, on, 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 to create new. Now it's important for me to make sure that the normals are all pointing in the right direction so that the lighting is correct. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on show normals and I'm going to go ahead and look at the face normals and make sure that they're all pointing outward. And it does appear that indeed they are. Um, if I actually realize that the uh, some of the normals on the inside are showing through, which is fine um, because we're not going to see those. So I'm going to go back and turn that off now and it looks like we're in pretty good shape for for the shape of our sword no pun intended so last but not least uh, I don't want this sword to be as smooth as it is because it's going to have sharp edges so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the mesh options and I'm going to say set flat and what this does is it says any angle between two sides or polygons that is less than 40 or longer than greater than 45 degrees will result in flat shading and this creates um, a pretty good edge now I want that to be even more sharp, so it looks like 45 degrees wasn't enough. So I'm going to go back into this and I'm going to hit at mesh 
set flat, and I'm just going to go ahead and say zero. And what that does is that creates truly a flat shaded um, sword uh, mesh. So now that we have our sword in place, we are just about done here. All I have to do is move it. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to select these two pieces and I'm going to roughly move them into place underneath the sword. And then I'm going to go back to uh, split view and I'm going to really get them in, into the right position. And the way I'm going to do that is just moving them in the respective views. So that I can get them, oops, so I can get them into the right place. We center it here. I'd like to center it here. And I'd like to center it here, which it looks like it actually already is. So we're just about finished here. One thing you'll notice is that the sword is not ex actually it is kind of it's actually pretty good size. So I think we've actually I think we've actually done it. So usually I, th I thought I would have to adjust the uh, the scale of the sword again, but um, this is actually pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and select all three of these and just kind of move them uh, towards closer to the center of the scene. So that's our sword. Uh, that concludes the modeling part. Real quickly, I, um, I, I don't like it looking all gray like this, so I'm going to quickly texture it. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a texture that I quickly set up um, in advance for this tutorial. So I'm just going to copy this uh, crosshatch texture and I'm going to go ahead and paste it into the scene. Into, this, into the texture library and I'm going to go grab over to the texturing panel and I'm going to go ahead and just apply that to the uh, the bottom of the sword and I'm going to apply it to the uh, the top of the sword handle as well. So I'm just going to go ahead and hit this and hit that. So now we have a nice pattern for uh, cross hatching at the bottom base of the sword handle. Now this is neat as is but uh, I kind of thought it'd be nice to also add some bump mapping since this thing isn't going to be perfectly uh, smooth surface. So um, adding on to the diffuse texture, I went ahead and pulled a cross-hatched normal map as well. And I'm going to copy that into the scene, which I have done. And I am going to apply that by switching the shader to bump mapping. And then I'm going to pick the bump texture to be that cross-hatch one that I found. And now we have a very interesting kind of almost bumpy pattern. Uh, that we've applied to the um, to the sword. And what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm also going to use a bump scale, which is going to tile the texture quite a bit more times over top of the surface, which we have there. I even want to do that more than that. I'm, I'm going to go ahead and switch this to like, oh, I don't know, eight. Eight might be too much. I don't want to harp on this too much either, though. I'm going to do that to the top as well. Bump mapping, bump texture. Just gonna make sure this thing really is set for this. Bump scale, yep, those are stored with the shader. So we have our nice looking bump. And you'll see that the bump actually changes with respect to the angle that the light strikes it, which gives it a kind of a degree of realism, which is awesome. Next thing I'd like to do is environment map to make the short sword look more realistic. So I'm gonna switch the shader for the sword over to reflective environment mapping. And we're gonna pick one of the stock cube maps. I'm gonna pick a brighter one if I can. And now you'll notice the sword looks like a real sword. It's reflective and shiny, which is very cool. So that is my tutorial for how to model a sword in Virto Studio.